How's it going, everybody? Landon with the Truck Boss Show. As always, next to the awesome, the wonderful, the one and only. Thank you for saying you that. <laughs> Hola, muchachos. Hello. How's it going? Hola, muchachos. <laughs> See, I can't get away with that. But hey, thanks for joining us here. Get a part of the conversation. Like, comment, share. We've got an excellent show lined we out do. for today. A couple different segments that I know you're going to enjoy. But like we always like to do here at the show, we want to make sure we bring the latest headlines always. of what's going on in the industry. Yes, so we, we want to keep you first. updated. Well, we already know football. Football just happened this past weekend. That's right. Let me tell you that this is Super Bowl, what was it, 53? That's 53. a lot of football yeah, games. I've done a few of them. Well, let's do this. <laughs> Let me tell you, um, we're going to just talk about how much is basically. Hold on, i got to say something. I'm going to interrupt you. Oh, kind of like ahead. what you do. What's cool about this is that last couple of weeks, the Super Bowl has been all over the headlines, ESPN, blah, 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 everything, right? Mm -hmm. But they don't talk about what you're about to talk about and what it takes in the trucking industry to make the Super Bowl happen. you got some cool stats. That is correct, Landon. So according to the United States Department of Agriculture, Super Bowl Sunday is the second highest day of food consumption in the U.S. after Thanksgiving. That is a lot of food if That's you right. really think about it. But the good folks at Omnitrax have broken down some Super Bowl Sunday food stats that truckers can relate to. During the big games, this is how much Americans you know they consume and we're going to start off with the minnesota trucking association also released that super bowl sunday stats for truckers according to americans will consume over 100 truckloads of popcorn 350 truckloads of potato chips 668 truckloads of avocados and 1562 truckloads of chicken wings and over 36,166 truckloads of beer Landon, let me tell you that that is a lot. I helped so, with that beer haul, let me just say. <laughs> and I think we all helped with the chicken wings Listen. and the popcorn and all that stuff. Now, if you think about it, when you said beer, the drinks alone is only 325 million gallons of beer. That's a lot. Only? You can't That's use the word only. only. <laughs> let me tell you that. That's a ton. In one day, are you kidding me? How much do you think that is spent on potato chips? I have no clue. And we're talking about millions here. We're not talking about just a couple of thousand. 227 million on potato chips. <laughs> That's tons of money. Now, consumers buy $330 million worth of pizza. I would say I contribute to That's that right. because I'm a pizza lover. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to the avocados, 8 million guacamole, that would be me as well. Isn't it like a hundred truckloads on that or something? Yes, uh, for the uh, on the avocados. Could you imagine you're talking just a line of trucks and all says just avocados. Avocados. I would that'd follow a, it. That'd be an awesome I would be right thing. behind it. That's right. But Landon, this is a lot of food that is That's being right. consumed. Now let's be clear: if it wasn't for our truckers, this would not be possible. Football wouldn't be happening, and none of this consumption would be going on. That's right. So big thank you to so, any of those yes, truckers hands that down are part to of them. making Super Bowl Sunday what it was. They made it possible across the nation. That's for sure. So they made it possible. That's I, right. That that's always exciting, but we, uh, you know, we got to give the, the respect to who mm. deserves it. That's right. Shifting gears a little bit with the second topic. Last week we had the opportunity to bring to your attention Black Smoke Matters and their movement that you're seeing on Facebook and a few headlines across the industry. I had the opportunity to be able to sit down with the head or actually the founders of Black Smoke Matters to be able to dive into specific details. If you recall, they have six points that they're really advocating for and wanting to see change when it comes to independence and truck fleets or fleets, small fleets that are 10 trucks or less. Um, it was a very compelling interview and what's great about this is it actually is going to be leading up to the launch right here on the Truck Boss Show of our Black Smoke Matters special series that you're only going to find here uh, where we dive into specific topics about how they're organized as well as ELDs and the specific solutions that uh, they have that are different from what's already being proposed through other organizations and FMCSA at, uh, currently. We also jump into hours of service which is a heated topic in itself and a really cool topic when it comes to truckers sitting at the table at FMCSA and we're going to pull back the curtain on all these details to really bring to you what you're only going to find right here on the Truck Boss Show. And so I'm excited about that. That's coming next week. You don't want to miss it. We're going to have that special series, excuse me, launching over the next couple of weeks. Landon, I'm glad that you're being on, mm -hmm. you're, you know, you're staying on top of this. It is an important topic for our followers, our viewers that are out there that really right. don't have an idea of what's going on behind the scenes. And this gives them a little bit more of an explanation and understanding yeah of how things are working right now. Absolutely, and it was just a special assignment that I'm, I was excited about. I am excited about it because there's a lot more coming. And I can't thank um, the, the founders, the leaders, and the other advocates of Black Smoke Matters for their time. 
because they're drivers. They're out there making money, moving America, and they took the time to meet with us here at the show. And that series launches next week, and you don't want to miss it. Um, what's great about everything is that we're jumping right into our segments that we have for this show. And the first one is, is an incredible story about some immigrants from South Africa with a company called Seagate. Two gentlemen that I had the privilege of sitting down and getting their story about how they got to the country, how they launched their company, and how they overcame the big obstacles that they're facing in their specific situation. Uh, headquartered down in Dallas, you're really going to enjoy this interview because they end with some advice for those who are starting their company in 2019. Check this out. What, what do you think the biggest challenges are for your company now? Yes. And then what are the biggest challenges for the person that's just getting started? So um, let's start with your company. Uh, yeah, yeah. Getting experienced drivers. Yes. It's becoming a bigger challenge. Yeah, because as the drivers now don't, when some people see there's money in it, people try to get in for money. So once people start getting in for money, they come in with the wrong mentality because they overlook other things. As we were here to, to raise our families, this is our business. We need to grow it. It's not just about making the money. So, so getting the drivers who understand that part of it, not just coming in for the money. If somebody's coming in for the money, they're, not, they're gonna mess up the regulations because they, just, they are in it for the money. Right. Yeah. So, but if somebody in it, they know that as in they are in it for the long haul. They have to feed their families. They want to follow every detail of it and make right. sure they do it right. True and those are the yeah, getting drivers who are professional like that is becoming a challenge. What would you do differently today if you had to start over? Um, that's that question is challenging. What yeah. You do if you were to start over you today, start over again. I think I'll set the rules and regulations for the drivers differently, whereby you abide by the law. I don't care who you are. I don't care if I'm making money. Because as a new company, there sometimes people tend to look the other way because they don't want to lose a driver. But I would rather lose that driver, and I know when it comes to my renewal for my insurance, nobody's going to turn me down. That's wow. the thing that I'll do different today. That is very good. Mike, would you have anything uh, different? Because Remember, you have uh, buying buying a truck is the easiest thing. That's the number one easiest thing in the industry. Buying an equipment, right. anybody can buy. Whatever happens after you buy that equipment is what becomes a nightmare. So, some places you go roadside service, they come repair your truck. They can take credit card. So you think you could have solved your problem with a credit card? You can't. The guy don't they, they don't take credit cards. He need cash. You don't have an EFS. You don't have a Comdata. You don't. So people start these companies that they haven't set set up some things in place to be able to help them solve some certain issues when they are starting. The first six months becomes very rough. For any new MC number, if you survive the six months, then at least you are somewhere down the line, you're going to succeed a little bit. But in the first six months, most of the guys, they just, they just close shop, or they right. get bored out, or yeah. they just get assimilated by, 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 by the other company. So most of the owner players who come in, they started with an MC number, but they don't, they don't survive. You know, the system just kicks them out. You know, because you, know, you don't even have a bargaining power. You know, uh, any broker who looks at an MC number and they see it's new, they're gonna they're gonna throw out a prize, you know, because they know yeah you're not gonna get any better from, you know somewhere else. So now you 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 start off you start off on the downside almost from the negative perspective, trying to build your way into positive, and you're a new guy who thinks that you came into the industry where you but people people talk people ask questions hey I wanna go into trucking hey there's so much money you know the veteran drivers they don't give you the true picture of what is going on, right. so now you jump in thinking, hey, this is, the money, this is the money industry, I mean to make it, and boom, you jump in, only to realize, hey, it wasn't as it was stated. But for a new guy who is outside looking in, I'll say before they consider doing anything or if they, they've already made up their mind, make sure, make safety a priority in this industry. If you do that, build your safety department well, where everything is followed by the book, they'll be very okay. Very good. Yeah. Very good. Talk about living the American dream. I just absolutely enjoyed their story. Isela, what did you think? I think it's an amazing story. You know, a lot of people, that's what, when they come to America, that's the whole point is they have a dream. Mm -hmm. And when they can make it happen here, I think it's just amazing. It takes a lot of hard work. It does. And Dedication it, and discipline, but it can, it can and happen. I had the privilege of sitting with them for several hours that afternoon down in Dallas, right there in their headquarters. They have four different companies under their holdings company, which is impressive. They started off with 40 trucks, now they're over 250, 260. 
just incredible people inside and out. Their team's awesome. Uh, and they're doing a lot of great things in the industry, really bringing some solutions to big problems. Again, the true definition of the American dream. That's right. It Only can here happen, in it's possible. It's just awesome. What's the next segment? Now it's time to move on to our popular segment. Truck Boss Show, thumbs up, thumbs down with Landon and Nikki. Muchachos, take it away. Gracias, Isela. I'm impressed. I didn't know you were bilingual. I can roll that R. I cannot. I'm, I'm from the South, and I'm a hick. So, hey, we're excited about this segment when it comes to Truck Boss Thumbs Up or Thumbs Down, where we actually talk about four important topics, and we rate it a big thumbs up or a big thumbs down. That's right, Lane, and we're going to roll into the first topic, which is the Walmart pay increase. That's I know, a big one. Yes, it's, it's been everywhere. One. It's all over social media. It's all over the news. Truckers are excited. Exactly. So why don't you yes. share more details? Yes, I will. This month, Walmart is hoping to hire hundreds of new truck drivers this year and raise their wages to almost $90,000 a year. According to a press release, the retail giant added more than 1,400 new truck drivers to its fleet last year, with hundreds more slated to join. Additionally, this month, Walmart is increasing driver pay by one cent per mile and providing additional pay for every arrival. These moves will bring the average salary of Walmart's drivers up to $87,500 a year, with an all-in rate of nearly $0.89 cents per mile. That's impressive. It you know, you know from, there's two sides of this when I, I see it on social media, read the articles. You've got one side of this where it's great to see Walmart making the investment, growing their fleet, investing into new drivers, bringing that community together, making more money. A lot of good things to talk about. The other side of that, though, is that, you know, when it comes to qualifications, as a driver, you've got to have a pretty darn good record, mm -hmm. plenty of experience before Walmart would actually hire you. So take a look at it on their website. You'll see their application process. Hopefully you qualify. But what do we rate this here at the Truck Boss Show? We're going to give this a big thumbs up. That's right. That's right. More carriers need to follow suit. That's right. So rolling on to topic number two is Owada sues Indiana hoping to derail truck tolling plan. OWADA is suing the state of Indiana and several state officials, including Governor Eric Holcomb, over the state's move to institute a 35% increase in toll prices for Class 3 and larger trucks that operate on I-80 and I-90. This toll hike took effect in October. OWADA is seeking to overturn the toll increases and for refunds of tolls paid since the increase went into effect. You know, Nikki, I can't tell you how excited I am to see OI to take this action. I think it's mm -hmm. ridiculous that state officials, the governor, um, not a personal attack on just the situation, mm -hmm. uh, that they're trying to put more cost on what it is to purload for each one of these drivers, each one of these small fleets, independents, and even larger fleets. They need to be more creative in finding areas to increase revenue for the state to take care of the highways. Putting that on the back of truckers is not the way. So what do we rate when it comes to increasing of the tolls here at the Truck Ball Show? Well, we're going to give it a big thumbs down. We're That's not happy right. about that. That's right. Couldn't agree more. So moving on, topic number three. Topic number three is the NLRB's updated guidance on independent contractor status focuses on drivers' operational freedoms. The National Labor Relations Board has issued a new standard in determining whether a worker is an independent contractor or a company employee. With the change seen as favorable to the independent contractor setup. The NLRB is an independent federal agency that acts as a watchdog over labor practices with a focus on enforcing labor law around unions and strikes. As part of a dispute between Super Shuttle DFW and a shuttle van driver, the NLRB ruled last week that entrepreneur, entrepreneurial sorry, opportunities should be a key consideration when determining whether a worker is an employee or a contractor. That's right. And I'm excited about this because when it comes to owner operators and who they haul for, they should have the right to say yes or no to a load if it doesn't make sense for their business or if it does. Exactly. And so mm -hmm. they should have the right to be in their own arbitrator when it comes to being able to negotiate their pay per mile, et cetera, which they do. But it's exciting to get this kind of backing so that owner operators know that they can stand on two feet yes. and negotiate and to be able to protect their business as well as make the most money. So kudos. So what do we rate this? We're going to give it a big thumbs up. That's right. Big truck boss thumbs up. That's right. Well, I've enjoyed this segment, Landon. As always, I have too. All righty. So until next time, back to you, Isela. Gracias, muchachos. And there you have it. It's always an amazing time with Nikki on the show. Love seeing her. Join us here at the Truck Boss Show. Thumbs up, thumbs down. That's right. You know, it's funny because I, uh, I always think that Nikki needs to be on more segments. I agree show. with you. She's uh, so much fun. Love her. She's, She's so funny. fun she and spunky. I love that. I love her unique approach and just does a great job every time. So big thanks to Nikki. 
and uh, that awesome segment of thumbs up, thumbs down, always a lot of fun. Um, we've got some exciting stuff coming up next week. Yes, we do. We did promise Hollywood. That's right, Hollywood. <laughs> I see that you, you get so excited yeah, get, with it that. It was an incredible time, and we actually put together some awesome stuff that you're going to see on next week's show. Plus, guys, listen closely. you got a week warning here. It's Valentine's Day for all those who need to get their wife or their significant other, significant other or partner, whatever have you, you need to make sure you plan ahead and get that Valentine's gift. You heard it very, the very first right here on the Truck Boss Show. Uh, don't miss out. If you do, you can't blame us. It's not our fault. You know what? It is going to be a big day, and it's very important if you miss out on that. That's right. So stay tuned. Coming to you next week on Thursday, as always, right here on the Truck Boss Show. Thank you for joining us. And if you don't know why we do this. Because you're the boss.